master of um, uh, um, diversifying his income source or income or stream of income and consider i think someone made a good point of it the other day i think joe Bello made a good point of it which is really something that should be of concern to some artists who are in it to make money or some artists who are in it to become tycoons or build empires if you're just in it to make music then i guess you shouldn't worry but even then you maybe should try and diversify your income stream just because you know uh, music is so it's so um music fans are a little bit what you call it they're not disloyal but you know they're a little bit um fair weather right if a new person comes along who offers them what they want they'll just dump you in an instant really so you can't really rely on that too often and i think joe Biden made a good point of it in his podcast where he says the concerning thing that all artists should be looking at this breakdown of jay-z's mil- of billions is the fact that music makes up so little of his portion of overall wealth even though he's one of the only artists or especially the top tier artists within his space who owns their masters right who's able to uh call the shots on when his music releases and puts it out when he wants to have his own streaming platform right he's the pinnacle of ownership he's a pinnacle of determining your own destiny and so much of his catalog and so little of his catalog makes up of his overall wealth considering that he's been doing music longer than he's been doing business that's quite scary right thinking about it like he's he's been a musician he's been a rapper he's been an elite rapper for longer than he's been a businessman but a business is far out strip he's rapping which is really scary and shows just how much just how important it is to have endorsements sponsorships stakes in companies um uh projects you're working on even without your name being attached to it um what's the, what's that thing called franchises right owning a burger king or a wendy's all these kind of things that other people do or wing stop like rick ross it's really really important because i think this this article from forbes breaks down the entirety of his, of his um income or so far his wealth i'm assuming he was always he's always been a he's been a billionaire maybe for the best part of a couple of years now um that'll make sense um but i guess maybe now because you know he's having to file certain things with taxes um they're able to kind of estimate his wealth from the, whatever public knowledge they have and they've kind of come to the assumption that he now is worth um one billion or he has a one billion dollar empire out there which is fucking insane imagine how cre- imagine how creative you'll be right imagine how because i think it's strange though because sometimes some types of creativity are born from the fact that you have no food on your plate right you need to get a roof over your head you're struggling to keep warm you're just in real dire straits all your peers have just left you behind and you feel fucking you like an absolute loser but some of the some of the best creativity comes from the point of not suffering right of not worrying about where your next meal is going to come from so it's part of me that thinks some of his best work will come now I mean, there's no surprise 444 was so amazing and so introspective was that he was he was in a place where you know he didn't need that to sell well right he doesn't he doesn't he's not counting on first week sales he's not relying on numbers on the billboard he's just putting out music that he feels really much connected to and music that he thinks is gonna make a difference right he's kind of trying to leave his mark on the cultural timeline of of what we're doing right now and i think that must really help being that financially secure you're able to just go into a booth and just be free experiment try new things try different sounds collaborate who you want to collaborate with without your name being besmirched in some way shape or form best read the articles from forbes artist icon billionaire how jay-z created his one billion dollar fortune um let's see here we can read the top let's open the paragraph nine years ago two unlikely lunch partners sat down in hollywood din- diner in omaha nebraska one warren buffett and a regular there and the other was jay-z was not the billionaire and rapper ordered strawberry malt and chatted amiably continuing the conversation back at buffett's Berkshire halfway offices buffett then 80 walked away impressed with the artist 40 years his junior jay's Jay is teaching in a lot bigger classroom than I'll ever teach. For a young person growing up, he's the guy to learn from, 100%. From his raps, what he says, his lyrics, to just how he moves and what things that he's doing, it's always good to keep an eye on what those people are doing and just kind of replicate it. Because I think, again, that's the best thing. Sometimes people are always waiting for, you know, some people that call in to call in, especially the Gary V call-ins and stuff, annoys me. They're always asking for, like, you know, uh, direct help and suggestions. Just, like, just look at what Gary V's doing, right? He's like a... He's a he's a he's like a, a stone cold businessman, an entrepreneur who's running you know a two hundred million dollar company. Uh, he's trying to buy the jets, and he's you know spending an exor- an inordinate amount of time developing his Gary V persona online, posting stuff on Instagram, podcasting, doing calling shows. Just watch what he's doing and recreate it. If he's going that hard in the paint on his social, just do the same thing with yours. If you're trying to be um, somebody of influence, if you're trying to be a, a thought leader or a spokesperson for a different kind of scene you don't need an answer same with a rapper thing right if you want to be as big as jay-z and own your masters and create the empire he's created just do what he's doing don't ask him any questions just follow what he just follow his lead in whatever way that you can do it right anyway it continues um less than a decade later it's clear that jay-z's accumulated a fortune that 
um, conservatively totals $1 billion, making him one of only a handful of entertainers who become a billionaire and the first hip-hop artist to do so. Jay-Z steadily growing kingdom of his expensive, encompassing liquor, art, real estate, and stakes in companies like Uber, which is interesting. That Uber story is fucking incredible, right? Supposedly that Uber story goes something along the lines of uh, Beyonce was meant to perform at one of Uber's um, parties, Christmas party, or wherever it may be, when Travis Clackanic was still in charge, when they were when they were like in their full-on startup phase, right? But he got booted out, unfortunately, now. Um, so he was, she was meant to perform there and instead of taking uh, the fee that she demands usually she decided to up for a stake in the company and like a, a minor percentage and I think they gave it to her she performed she left and then when Uber filed for an IPO just recently um, that fortune rose you know ex- you know exponentially to like I don't know hundreds of millions of dollars which is again uh, an incredible an incredible turn of events for both of them um, as a couple I'd assume because again joint fortunes are better than uh, solo fortunes um, his journey is all the more impressive given his start. The Brooklyn Notorious Marcy housing project. He was a drug dealer before becoming a musician. Starting his label Rockefeller Records to release his 1996 debut, Reasonable Doubt. Since then, he has amassed 14 number, number one albums, 22 Grammys, and over 500 million in pre tax earnings in a decade. Again, the, the impressive thing about Jay Z isn't just that. I say that's super impressive, really impressive, extraordinary. The most impressive thing about people of that kind of considerable level of wealth. Which I think is, uh, adv- is I think something you'd see in a lot of startups too. When um, PayPal exited, when WordPress exited, it, 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 what else do you have one? There's a few others. MySpace, when that sold and the guy kind of like, you know, he's completely cut off from social, doesn't really do many interviews, just lives his life quietly, doing his philanthropic pro- uh, projects. The most impressive thing, impressive thing about Jay-Z is the fact is how many other people around him have become millionaires off the back of the work that he's done. He's empowered so many different people. And I think that's the key to his success, his ability to build empires. I think in general, I think I used to be extremely naive because I'm quite um because i'm quite headstrong and i do things on my own and i don't really like help and i don't ask for help I, w- I i was incredibly naive in terms of how much i could do on my own right thinking i could do everything on my own i could build my own empire build my own tycoon i don't need any help but what you realize the older you the older you get is that you need a network again i'll go back to that kind of article that i mentioned from artnet that said you know a precursor a predictor of who's going to be a very successful contemporary artist is the network that they keep, right? In terms of the gallery represent people in their peer group, the people that they socialize with, you know, just just picture those famous pictures of people in Studio 54. What made those pictures really incredible is the kind of juxtaposition of the celebrities that you'd see in there, the individuals, right? Cultural figures, politi- politicians, artists, designers, architects. That network is what kind of really dictates how far you go in, right? Because you could be in a club and you could bump into somebody who desires... You, and you're an architect and they want you to stage design their next tour you've never done it before but they, they really trust your vision all of a sudden you then become a stage designer that all then goes into you maybe making music whatever it kind of cascades into there but i think the older you become the more you realize that your network or your your people that you keep around you your friends are the ones that are really going to determine how far you go and sometimes being able to empower your friends and show them that if they stick by you that you know there's only you know, um, milk and honey at the end of that rainbow is a really, really difficult skill to do because you only have to see the amount of crews have, that have crumbled or that have disbanded due to differences in creative vision and maybe deals and all that sort of stuff. It's really hard to kind of find that balance of like, how do I empower my friends to stick with me, right? And to help me grow. And how do I also help them grow themselves in their lane, right? Because essentially, you know, he's probably got in his social group maybe five plus people that are, are caught, are, on paper millionaires which is flip insane considering he's the star usually in hip-hop or rap groups or in that kind of creative even just a creative field there's a one person you kind of all band around and kind of make sure you push and you facilitate their journey but the people around are just you know hanging on for crumbs you're just on salary right but he's able to really i think kevin house is the same thing too with the red cup boys right He's given them, instead of just putting them on salary, he's allowed them you know, a platform to do their own thing, right? To contribute um, in terms of ideas for maybe his jokes or to build out their own TV series or to do shows on his comedy, on his Life Out Loud comedy network and stuff. That's the way to kind of really build an empire, to real, really build wealth um, going forward. And I think, again, it's a real it's a real talent that a lot of people don't really take take too much notice to. But I've noticed in the biggest people usually, you know, look, look at their closest friends, like they're all rich too. You know what I mean? Or they're all well off as well. Um, the moment you start noticing the crew's looking a bit straggly and there's only one person looking shiny and it's got exfoliated skin and wearing nice clothes and looks like they had a good night's sleep, that's probably not a good sign. <laughs>
it should probably be the other way around isn't it? it should probably be the person that's the leader should be the one looking more disheveled than actually the the, the ones around him anyway um so what's jay-z worth uh, to calculate his net worth we looked at the artist stakes and companies um da, 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 then added up his income subtracting the healthy amount of for to account for superstar lifestyle so um um uh our man the brignac that's um ace of spades right um and uh, Jay-Z had used his music to shield the $300 bottles of Ace of Spades uh, champagne since launching the brand. Oh, that's his actual brand. I had no idea. Mamma mia. Okay, it's underneath the Armandic Big Game now, whatever. 300 mi- 310 million. Um, show me what you got. More recently, his verse on Meek Mill's What's Free put his half billion dollar value on the wine, which seems like a bit too bubbly for a number. Um, cash in- in- investments, 220 million. A vast investment portfolio includes a stake in Uber worth an estimated 70 million. He reportedly purchased his piece for 2 million back in 2000. Oh, this is outside of Beyonce. Wow. And then w- Wyatt found uh, another 5 million in an attempt to increase his holdings but was rebuffed. Mama mia. Duce, he has 100 million in Duce. Jay Z's Cognac. Cognac, a joint venture with beverage giant Bacardi, moves almost 200,000 cases and has almost grown nearly to 80, 80% annually. Jay-Z resonates with consumers who are attracted to the ultra-premium lifestyle. Yeah, again, Duce Palouse has probably done a good job of helping that too. Tidal, 100 million. Mamma Mia. Rock Nation, 75. This wide-ranging entertainment company started over a decade ago and a joint venture with concert uh, giant Live Nation. Rock Nation represents some of the biggest stars. Yeah, they do um, in terms of uh, doing people's tours, right? That's amazing. Entertainment through sports agency. They can represent Kevin Durant and Todd Gurdley as well as record label arts management arms um, representing Rihanna and J. Cole. Music catalog, 75 million. Again, a small fraction of what his overall thing is. See, his music, like, look at look at it. On the, if you see on the screen, his music uh, catalog is worth 75 million, according to Forbes, and his art collection is worth 70. He's been doing music, like, for what, 20 years, maybe plus, um, at a high level, owning most of his masters, if not all of his masters, and publishing. But he's only, it, like, and his art, which is probably only started buying as of late. In 2013, is it? 2013, purchased his first piece of art. Mamma mia, man. Music is deadly. Um, he's got, per- yeah, Picasso's, and then he's real estate, 50 million. He owns homes all over the place, I'm assuming, right? After welcoming twin, 2017, Jay Z and Beyonce bought a pair of homes to match. 26 million East Hampton Mansion, and 88 million Bel Air Estate. Jay Z also owns a Tribeca penthouse, snagged at 6.5 million in 2004. Wow. Amazing, man. Super inspiring to see. I think for all people, for everyone involved in the culture, maybe the culture, even just music in whatever, hip hop, just in whatever, in just life, right? Just to see this is what happens when you diversify your income. Yeah, more money begets more money, man. Amazing, amazing success. And again, an, a marker of just how well he's done things, paved his own way. He hasn't really played industry games. And yeah, he's reaped the benefits of it, man. He's reaped the benefits of it tenfold.